Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we are comparing the 57 PPD, the ultra crisp, very high resolution optical engine for the Crystal Super and also the ultra wide optical engine that Pimax has sent me for review in addition to the 50 PPD standard version that I have already reviewed and I'm going to tell you which one I think is best within the realms of flight simulation and in particular DCS World. First of all, a quick disclaimer, I am not really a tech guy, I am a pilot in real life and I have spent a huge portion of my spare time flying around in simulators, in particular DCS World, uh, and therefore I'm more of a kind of I want to fly guy and I don't claim to be a sort of tech guru that knows how to tune a VR headset as best as possible. I've used all the available guides out there, tally mouse, etc, and I think I've reached a point of where I'm really struggling to find any extra performance. Uh, without losing quality or vice versa. There is always a chance that if you are tech savvy, you might be able to tune your VR headset better than mine. The other thing is uh, all the footage in this video uh, is most of it is almost all of it is my VR footage, but it's not using my VR settings. Uh, in other words, I am using my 2D settings that I would normally uh, fly and record videos with on my 4k monitor because I'm using the replay of the VR flights and it saves the tracking of the camera and of the VR headset exactly as it was but I get the 2d uh, screen settings now the reason I'm doing that is one because it's more entertaining it's nicer to look at a pretty picture but two even if I was to try and show you the exact settings I have in my VR headset actually it's not very representative because the feeling of being there and having everything big in front of you and exactly as it is in real life and having that depth perception actually makes up for a lot of the uh, graphics that you tune down, if that makes sense. So it's not very representative showing you my VR headset settings on a 2D screen anyway. So before we dive into any of the details and any of my opinions about the 57 BPD or the ultra-wide optical engines, I just want to summarize as quickly as possible my thoughts on VR in general and the Crystal Super using the 50 PPD version that I have reviewed before. If you haven't checked out that video, feel free to check it out right now. Um, it'll put these into a little bit more context, but I will try and summarize. So first of all, I am an extremely difficult customer to please when it comes to VR headset technology and um, the current implementation of VR. Uh, within flight simulation, although I absolutely firmly believe that VR is the future and sitting inside a real jet or at least what feels like inside a real jet is an experience which cannot be replicated in any other way and it is phenomenal. Having the peripheral vision and also the depth perception is so vital to being able to control an aircraft or a helicopter accurately that it really opens up a wide range of possibilities and your own personal abilities in terms of being uh, able to control aircraft relatively precisely uh, for example such as flying in close formation you know you know exactly how far away you are from that wingtip or from the fuselage of another jet um, you've got the peripheral vision telling you for example when you're flying upside down in between the two tails of another MiG-29 which is obviously a very practical example of using a VR headset I think. It gives you that peripheral vision that really gives you a spatial orientation and you can actually provide inputs, control inputs um, at a point where I don't think you would definitely struggle to do it on a 2D screen with a track IR. I think it is probably possible with enough practice but it's so intuitive in a VR headset it's kind of like that natural feeling of exactly the, you, the way you would experience it in real life uh, and it opens up possibilities which I think track IR you would definitely struggle with for example if you're sitting in the back of an L39 or any other jet and you know you've got all these canopy rails which are obstructing your vision uh, it might be a little bit difficult to see up ahead as the instructor when you're in the back seat in track IR it's a real pain you have to try and lean it's all very unnatural and then you have to try and kind of get a viewpoint of the runway but because with your sort of 3d vision with your two eyes creating two different pictures and they're overlapping uh, what all often happens is you know the same kind of principle as when you're driving a car and you've got the, the a pillar in front of you and um, you kind of don't really see the pillar right because 
your eyes combine the images in a way such that it's almost sort of transparent. Obviously, it isn't. But it's the same sensation in VR. Because you've got that 3D vision, your brain sort of erases that away in, uh, to a certain degree. And it's much easier to see through gaps uh, and to see through, you know, uh, spaces where you would generally really struggle. Like, I don't think I could come in an L39 and land uh, in uh, on a 2D screen oh, anywhere near as easily if I was the instructor leaning um, and looking from the rear cockpit. And then there's dogfighting. For dogfighting, I've said it before, but VR is completely irreplaceable. And I think, actually, no matter what VR headset you use, um, unless it's something extremely outdated that only has about three pixels, uh, generally speaking, almost any VR headset is going to be far superior to a 2D screen because you have that depth perception. Not only that, but you're so concentrated on looking at the other aircraft. You have that uh, feeling of actually being there, having to twist your head around. I mean, the feeling of dogfighting is just absolutely out of this world. It's phenomenal. VR cannot be replaced there. No matter what I say later on in this video about my gripes, about not being able to tune VR performance or whatever, you can always tune the graphics down and make VR run smoothly if you really wanted to, uh, in most cases, within reason. And therefore, you can definitely have an incredible time dogfighting. You're not really concentrated on the beauty of the world, how beautiful the water or the clouds or the trees are. You're really, really literally focused on the other jet. And for that, VR is just insane. Okay, so now let me summarize exactly what I said about the 50 PPD version of the Crystal Super in my previous video. I said the image is incredible, it's extremely sharp, is the sharpest I've seen on any VR headset, but I simply couldn't live with the compromises required uh, in terms of graphical fidelity, how much I had to tune my graphic settings down in DCS in order to make it run smoothly whilst retaining the crisp sharpness of the Crystal Super, which is why you're probably buying this headset, is you want that Crystal Super sharpness in the image. And uh, the, the, the compromises were just too big because I really like a pretty picture. Now, if it's dogfighting, 100%, I'll jump into the VR headset, no matter what, as I've explained before. And for some other things like instructing from the back seat, absolutely, formation flying, any of that sort of like really technical flying that involves uh, your uh, flying skills as such uh, more than enjoying the pretty picture you know because most missions you might fly you really have like a beautiful sky beautiful scenery you want to see beautiful explosions all these units so on and so forth I just wasn't digging the amount of graphical settings I had to tune down and I said that I will only be using VR for certain things uh, but the majority of my flying will still certainly be in 2D so how does the 57 PPD version compare to the 50 PPD well, I was actually very surprised to know that it runs smoother than the 50 PPD, even though it technically gives you a sharper image to look at. But I do have some good and some bad things to say about this optical engine. It took me a long time uh, before I figured out that it has a very, very, at least the way it sits on my face, a very finite small window of where your eye pupils have to sit with regards to the lens in order to have that focal point of where the image can get projected onto your eyes in a way that isn't come across as blurry. Um, it took me forever because I thought my IPD was off. I set it exactly to the way I'd measured it in the app. It didn't work, then I moved uh, the IPD out in, and I just couldn't figure out why I was getting eye strain until a certain point I realized that because the headset obviously uh, can move around on your head and every time you put it on, you kind of have to try and wiggle it to find that perfect uh, focal point. Um, I found that the 57 PPD lenses were extremely sensitive to that. Not only that, but I also realized that they were sticking out a little bit further than the 50 PPD and the ultra wide lenses, which meant that I had to use a thicker face pad mask uh, in order for me to sit comfortably because otherwise the edges of the lenses would actually dig into my, my eye sockets and it was very uncomfortable. And even then, after I found out that there was this very, very finite, small um, tolerance where you can position the headset, 
And remember, when you twist the headset left, right, up, down, especially in a dogfight, it might move a little bit. And therefore, finding that focal point again might be a little bit challenging, and I found that at least to be the case. Now, when it was focused around the center, when you did find it, it was incredibly sharp. It was like, holy crap, wow, this is amazing. As soon as I saw it, I was like, my god, I'm ditching the 50 PPD. I'm going to be sticking with this forever because it's so sharp and so good. And... It does run smoother so you're really technically winning in a lot of areas now it does have a smaller fov but it's at a point where you don't really notice uh, at least i thought i didn't really care uh, i i didn't even think about the fact that it was it was marginally smaller um, but one thing that i have noticed after a while is that although even if you find that perfect focal point and it's sitting perfectly centered exactly where it should be, you've got your IPD set, you've tuned everything beautifully, you've put your headset on exactly the way it's supposed to be and you've found that perfect spot. What I have found, as soon as you look away from the center of the lenses and you look out to the side somewhere, you do get blurriness. And I guess it's just the way the lenses are projecting the image and maybe it's my face, maybe it's a combination of that thicker face pad, I don't know, but I could tell you that looking straight ahead looks great but as soon as you start looking away whilst maintaining you know your head position but you're looking left right up or down you're getting a lot of blurriness and i found i was getting a lot of eye strain after using that um, module even though if i was constantly looking at the center of the image it was extremely sharp and if i had just twisted my head everywhere to look instead of you know um, twisting my eyes if that makes sense or my vision uh, my the direction of, of, of my vision um, maybe I could have got around it but that's not really a practical solution especially if you're buying a VR headset with foveated rendering which is supposed to have that sharp image no matter where you look so the 57 BPD for me I uh, didn't really quite work in the end I thought it would because it was so sharp and it ran smoother which was amazing and in theory if I didn't have this blurriness around I would have said yeah absolutely I'm gonna stick with that one but I had to pass on it unfortunately because in the end I think I was just getting way too much eye strain and the other thing to mention is that maybe with your face it wouldn't be so much of an issue as with mine um, getting that focal point looking around but uh, I did find that the, the module itself uh, started to make a lot of noise after using it inside a, a simulator for a while. I guess it has some sort of fans or engines uh, that are working constantly inside. And it was way louder than the other two. I told Pimax, they said, uh, they're not sure that some other people may have experienced the same issue. They were happy to replace it, send out a new one. Um, in the end, to be honest, I didn't really care too much because it didn't really affect it to the point of where I would have said, I don't want to use this as a result of the increased amount of sound or noise because if you're sitting inside a jet or a helicopter and you've got the, the engine noise already, it's probably going to overpower at least most of that um, sort of, you know, fan or hoover-like uh, noise that's coming from the module itself. Now, the other two do also make noises. They're just nowhere near as loud. Um, and then I switched across to the, the widescreen, the wide field of view uh, optical module. And yeah, I think this is my favorite. Um, you don't get any of the issues which I have mentioned with that focal point where you look to the side, you get a lot of blurriness. At least I haven't found any. I don't get any stri eye strain really, I think, whatsoever whenever I use it. I think finding that focal point is a lot easier, just like in the 50 PPD version. And I was initially very skeptical because Pimax said to me, you should try the ultra wide because it's going to be better for dogfighting. And my initial thoughts were, no, it's not, because if I look straight up, um, the FOV is actually reduced. It's only increased uh, side to side, but up and down, it's actually slightly compressed. And to me, I immediately thought that's not going to be as good for dogfighting. But I was actually wrong. Um, in the VR headset, you'll notice that, for example, if you're in the MiG-29, the limiting factor, actually, the top of your vision is the pilot's helmet, which is quite realistic. I fly aerobatics in real life. I have a helmet. It's quite thick. And if you look up, you actually do see the edges of the helmet. And technically, that is the point that restricts the amount of angle that you can look up. And it's exactly the same in the VR headset. You'll see the pilot's helmet. So actually, it doesn't matter. And also, when you actually dogfight with a VR headset, you don't twist your head the same way you do in track AR. You'll notice here in the VR footage that I have for dogfighting, when I try and look back, it's actually the edges of my field of view um, where the ultra wide really does help. And you really can see quite a bit behind you there uh, as a result of having the extra space on each side. Um, however, I have to say, between all three of them, the differences in terms of FOV are not actually significant enough for me 
to choose one over the other specifically because of the FOV. In the end, I would have totally gone for the 57th PPD, which gives you a little bit less FOV, but a sharper image and run smoother had it just not given me eye strain and been so difficult to find that perfect focal point and also being a little bit blurry off that focal point, especially when you look left, right, up and down. So in the end, I think the ultra wide simply wins for me because it's sort of like the 50 PPD it performs at least, I think pretty similar to the 50 PPD. Um, the image quality seems about the same, but I think compromising a little bit on the up and down isn't really even a compromise because I don't think I even notice it. It's actually side to side where you win a little bit more which you, I think does help, especially for dogfighting and combat flight simulation. My vote goes to the ultra wide, although the 50 PPD I think is still pretty good. And the 57 PPD is one of these really frustrating, super awesome, but at the same time, I just can't figure out how I can use it reliably all the time without eye strain. So I can't really recommend the 57 PPD just based on my own personal uh, experience with it but there's a chance that you might have uh, a better face fit for the 57 ppd where it might actually work a little bit better i really don't know uh, but the ultra wide for me so far is the one to go for and like i said before i am not really still a vr person i think i will be in the future and i wish i was but i just like seeing a pretty picture in a lot of my missions even if it's a combat mission i still want to enjoy it pretty soon especially if you're flying in a straight line or you're not doing anything well, I think, you know, the image quality and the beauty of what you're seeing is very important. I think um, the compromise is required to make VR run smoothly. For me, it's still very frustrating. Um, please don't take this the wrong way. Some people have been convinced with VR technology years ago and have switched across already. will never go back to a 2D screen. I totally get those people. And if you're one of those people who just loves the VR feeling already as it is, um, then I can honestly suggest and say that the Crystal Super with the Ultra Wide is awesome. But, but you have to bear in mind that I have a very powerful computer, and even then I think I'm struggling with how much I have to tune down my graphics to make it run smoothly. So there is a chance that maybe there's some other headsets out there which are perhaps not as good quality in terms of the image um, and the image sharpness itself, but perhaps you'll be able to eke out a little bit more um, performance and more graphical settings out of the simulator itself um, as a compromise to not having quite that same Christmas in the image. But I really hope that I've given you enough food for thought to make um, an educated guess for when you're buying a VR headset and maybe use this more as a data point, if you will. But if you are looking for a VR headset and you are interested in the Pimax's offerings, then feel free to check out the link in the description below and use command T to get 3% off on top of their Christmas sales uh, and which are running right now, or even Command T80, which will get you 80 bucks off a uh, Crystal Super uh, on top of the uh, Christmas sale as well. Uh, so feel free to check out in the description below, but hopefully otherwise, I shall catch you in the next one. Adios.